Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we have another review for you written by a good friend of the channel, David Morrish, who was assisted by his wife, Sophie. So thank you very much, Team Morrish. Microsoft have been good to us Switch owners lately, allowing us to have Minecraft, Cuphead, Ori and the Blind Forest, Banjo and Smash of course, and now new Super Lucky's Tale, which is an expanded version of Super Lucky's Tale, which was a launch game for the Xbox One. Having never played that version, I will not be able to make a comparison and will be reviewing this one exactly as I see it. So is Lucky set to become the next big platforming mascot on the Switch? Well, thank you to the developers for the review copy. And now let's find out. The game opens up with an intro being told using still images of how the evil cat Jinx tried to steal the Book of Ages with the help of his minions known as his Kitty Litter. And don't worry, there are plenty more puns in the game where that came from. Lucky, after being separated from his sister, is on a quest to travel to the various worlds and collect the pages along the way and ultimately save the day. New Super Lucky's Tale is a 3D platformer with some 2D levels thrown in for good measure. You have six worlds, each with its own hub world, with portals that lead to the levels. As you would expect with 3D platformers, there are collectibles to be had. The main things you'll be obtaining are called Clover Pages. Each of the levels contains four, one for beating the level, one for collecting 300 coins, one for finding all five letters that spell Lucky, and the fourth is a mystery one, either sneakily hidden away or gained through solving a puzzle. The hub worlds themselves also have a few Clover Pages to find. When you collect enough of them, then you unlock the boss door where you fight a member of the kitty litter before moving on to the next world. Then, of course, it's rinse and repeat. You have three hearts as your health, lose them all and you lose a life, but the game is very generous with the amount of extra lives that you can find. The 2D levels feel quite similar to Donkey Kong Country Returns, especially since you are collecting hidden letters and they play very well, Bouncing off enemies to gain a bit of extra airtime and smashing objects in your way all feels good. You can even travel between the foreground and the background. Some levels are auto runners too, where it is about timing your jumps correctly to take the best paths. The 2D levels are very well constructed and are a joy to play, but I feel the highlight of this game lies in the 3D levels. These present you with a mission, which can be simply making it through the level, but there are side missions along the way that let you earn more coins or letters. The second world is based on farming, and I would like to highlight two particular 3D levels. The first is a chicken farm, where you have to remove these devices from the chicken's head that seem to have brainwashed them into turning giant and shooting boulder sized eggs. Along the way, you can earn a letter by rounding some chickens up in a pen. That's very trusting of them, letting a fox take care of their chickens. The other level is a harvest level. You arrive at a barn where the band is missing. You then explore three different areas in order to find the band members. One area being a stealth mission, one being a platforming fetch quest, and the final being a simple key carrying puzzle. Once you've rounded them up, you are treated to the band's performance. These 3D levels give off a better impression of the world around you and make it come alive. I find in a lot of 3D collectathons, doing missions for people to earn the main collectible is a great way to integrate yourself into these worlds and it generally has been well done, especially in the levels that I just described. The game controls very well with B to jump and double jump when pressed twice. Y swings your tail to attack and the triggers let you dive and dig underground. This is the unique move that Lucky has. It lets him avoid enemies, flip things over from underneath and go underneath fences and walls. If you are on undiggable terrain, you instead do quite a cool slide move. The camera works really well and was never a problem for me. Overall, the controls are simple and easy to get the hang of. It's a shame there isn't more depth to them as the digging mechanic is used well, but they could have done so much more with it. Now, the loading times are unfortunately a tad long, especially when it comes to retrying a puzzle where you would want to restart again straight away. But one instance that baffled me was on this 2D level where I fell in the water and lost a heart. It then took me back to the checkpoint without the need to load. When I fell in again on my last heart, I lost a life and then had to sit through a long load to take me back to the same checkpoint, the one that I had previously been taken to instantly. The boss fights are very standard for a 3D platformer. You dodge the attacks, wait for them to throw bombs your way and hit them back. Repeat until you win. The attack patterns get harder as the game progresses, but they are certainly not the hardest bosses I've encountered. To give some context, I managed to beat the final boss on just my third attempt. I must say I did find New Super Lucky's Tale quite easy to get through. 
For younger or less experienced players this won't be a problem, but those looking for a real challenge just won't find it here. Collecting enough pages to unlock the boss door was never much of a problem and you could easily ignore several levels in each world. If they had made it so that you had to collect the main clover page from each level, then it would have made for a more interesting experience. The fifth world actually does do this and it was by far my favourite world because of that. The mission to collect the 300 coins for a page is one that I never fail to accomplish due to the fact that the game is so generous with the amount of coins it produces, and ones that appear from defeating an enemy or breaking a box don't even need to be touched to collect them. There are also timer challenges, where you need to collect all the coloured coins before the time runs out to earn a reward. In these cases you are given too much leeway and they would have benefited from tighter time limits. Now the game is a lot of fun to play and it does a great job in all areas it attempts. Its simplicity is good for people to pick up and play, but the real lack of challenge will leave some people disappointed. In some ways this game is to 3D platformers what Kirby is to 2D platformers. A cute, fun game that won't be too taxing for most gamers, but still is an enjoyable experience. Gameplay gets 16 out of 20, whereas controls receive 18 out of 20. New Super Lucky's Tail looks very vibrant with cute cartoony visuals. The designs of the kitty litter in particular are varied and show a lot of personality that sets them apart from each other and makes them memorable. There are varied themes in the different worlds and levels too which helps to keep things interesting. Lucky himself is always happy which is strange seeing that at the end of the opening cutscene which is told through some wonderful still images he is yelling in fear as he is whisked away from his sister. We then see him arrive in Sky Castle and he looks around in awe like a child in a toy shop which is a complete contrast to how he had been feeling just a few seconds before. You will hear him cheering and whooping throughout the game which can become a little bit annoying. When a boss fight begins his initial reaction is to turn his back on this big threat to his life so he can cheerfully swoop his arms towards the camera, like a child beckoning his parents to hurry to the sweet shop. The music is very suiting to each level, we hear a lot of the upbeat tunes which encourage you to explore the levels and it's unobtrusive to the gameplay. The characters you talk to speak in a gibberish language as you read the text similar to Banjo-Kazooie or ukulele, and some of these are quite fitting and give you an idea of what they would sound like such as these worm farmers. The overall presentation will be very appealing to younger gamers and fans of anthropomorphic animals in general. It's colourful, inviting and has plenty of variety in the levels and characters to keep you invested. With this in mind, visuals receive 16 out of 20 whereas the audio also receives 16 out of 20. New Super Lucky's Tail sells on the eShop for £35.99, €39.99 or $39.99, but I have already seen the physical version on Base.com, for example, for £23.85, although this doesn't get released in the UK until the end of November. The main game isn't very long and, as previously mentioned, doesn't pose much of a challenge. There is more to do than just playing through the main quest though and you can revisit previously beaten levels or ones you didn't get to first time round in order to collect every single clover page. Plus there are also costumes you can unlock with the coins that you find. The main game ends after 5 worlds with the 6th being unlocked after you beat the final boss. Although there is enough to see and do to keep you occupied for a while, I feel the asking price on the eShop especially is too high. If you can find the much more reasonably priced physical version, or if it does go on sale, then it would be much easier to recommend the game. But as it is, I would personally find it hard to justify £36 and value receives 14 out of 20. To conclude, New Super Lucky's Tale is a fun, cute, simple but enjoyable experience. If you have a younger player then they would have a great time with this as its simple controls and colourful world full of zany characters and a lot of good humour will be very appealing. If you are a fan of 3D platformers like myself then it is worth playing as a more relaxing laid back experience which has a lot of great ideas with most of them being executed well. Had they implemented a difficulty option to allow you to make the game harder and the game was a bit cheaper in price then I would have rated this game higher, but it is definitely a game to keep on your watch list if you are a fan of the genre. Now Microsoft, how about those Banjo-Kazooie games next please? New Super Lucky's Tale gets a switch up score of 80%.
A huge thank you to Dave and Sophie for writing this one for us. Very much appreciated. A fantastic review. A quick thank you to our Patreons for your continued support. Remember, if you do want to join them, the links are in the description below. And a thank you to each and every one of you for continuing to watch our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.